This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hey, hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to CWK Live. I'm your host, Dan Zare, joined for a special segment with my co-pilot, Mason Zare. Hello, it's great to be back. Um, just finished the Bad Batch um, on Wednesday. That was the final time we did that together, and it's great to be back on. Let's do it. Let's do it. We are very excited to talk with you tonight. And yes, let's bring in our and our friends that are with us. Minta is here. Hello, Minta. This is the way. It's CWK Day. Hello, Minta. Great to have you. Adam, happy Revenge of the Sixth, all. Yes, happy Revenge of the Sixth. That's new this year. I don't ever remember it. I remember being happy Revenge of the Fifth. But my guess is that wasn't a thing because it was Sunday and people were doing non-internet things most likely. So either way. We get to celebrate Star Wars, and that means I get to blow the air horn. Where's the Where's the celebration thing? Yeah, that's not it. Oh, well. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Bright Suns, Jason, Mary, happy Monday to you. Ben is back. Ben is, says, I'm finally able to make it again. It's a wrap on classes for now. And I missed you guys. Hey, Ben. Good to see you, buddy. We're very happy to have you back on the show. Brian, may the Monday be with you. Hello, Brian. Brian looks like you had a fun fourth. Brian, or Darren is here. He says, what a good time having May the 4th be with you on a Saturday. Wasn't that cool? We're going to talk a lot about that. And Brian says, hi, Mad Eye Mason. Hey, hey. Like the good old days. Mary says, hi, Mason, too. Liberty, it's morning, Monday morning. No more Bad Batch. Oh, that is, that is true. That is true, Liberty. But it's I'm not in morning because I get to see all of you. And thank you, Liberty, for being here on tonight's show. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is going to go. We're going to give your top five moments from Star Wars The Bad Batch. The Calvary has arrived, the final episode in The Bad Batch. We've got a May the 4th be with you recap. And we've got a special edition of Star Wars news and merchandise. So now let's take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. Let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. I'm excited for this because Mason has no idea what I'm going to show, but you probably saw the news. It's like a, an internet break situation, but it was announced that we're going to get a brand new four-part Lego special Star Wars. I think it's Builds the Galaxy. That's coming out September 13th, but the huge news about it is, yep, you see it right there, Darth Jar Jar. Uh, first thing Mason asked me was what? This isn't canon, is it? Yeah, is this canon? No, it's not. It's fun. It's just going to be really fun and entertaining. So, awesome, right? And and Ahmed Best is going to be the voice of Jar Jar, as it should be. And speaking of Ahmed Best, hopefully one of the things that happened that you were able to help enjoy the May the 4th, sorry, I'm distracted by this picture, is that I interviewed Ahmed Best. Uh, I er, interviewed him last week. We aired it on May the 4th to celebrate the opening of the Bricks and Mini Figs Lego store in Pasadena. But Ahmed, this was actually his second time being on the show. We talked all about Jar Jar, about his amazing work in The Mandalorian, of course. And then with as Keller and Beck and just sort of what it means to have Star Wars and The Phantom Menace 25 years. Pretty fun. Really, really fun. So be sure to check that out. Minta knew it all along about Jar Jar. Ben says his fan service. Darren says, nice. I just saw the trailer on YouTube, September 13th. That's right. It's going to be fun. Liberty says, great interview with Ahmed. Thank you so much. He's an awesome dude. Like, seriously. He he and I are the same age, too, which is kind of fun. Uh, so, yeah, be sure to check that out. Let everybody know. It was, it was a great time. Uh, so let's go into merchandise. Okay. Actually, before going to merchandise, I'm going to switch the screen a second. One of the main reasons that we've got um, my Rockstar co-host here is Mason is the official expert of Star Wars, Star Wars' Fortnite edition. So, Mason, let's pretend that people watching the show have no idea what Fortnite is, how do you play it, what does it cost, all that stuff. How does Fortnite work? Can you uh, maybe grab the mic and let us know? Yeah, Fortnite is an online playing game 
where you can run around a map. Um, you try to be the last player standing. You can eliminate people with different types of guns, and it's free to play. And on May 4th, no, it was actually May 3rd, they added uh, a bunch of new Star Wars updates, and it was really cool. So that's, and I think that's part of the genius of Fortnite. Fortnite is a first person shooter. You play online. Mason plays. Third person. Third, right, that's what I meant. Third person. It's like I'm an English teacher. It's third person shooter. And you, the only way, like, you, Fortnite makes money because you buy skins, which is basically, what what is a Fortnite skin? Like, a skin is how your appearance shows. Like, if you're playing a Lego video game, what Lego skin you're playing. But it costs, like, real money in real life. Right. And that's, those are called V-Bucks, right? Uh, and I know that because I hear the term V-Bucks, oh, quite a bit. Uh, and we lost our camera. I don't know what happened there. Uh, <laughs> well, that's fun. I'm going to try to mess around this a little bit more. Let's see if I move in the top five if it pops back up again. Oh, there we are. Let's see if I can keep it like that. Ah, oh well. I'm going to try this. I'll worry about that another time. This is real. It's live video, kids. Uh, so then you... You, the Fortnite edition of Star Wars came out, and every single year, for the past couple of years, around May the 4th, they have new Star Wars stuff. What was the Star Wars stuff that dropped this year? Yeah, this year, um, normally they add a bunch of lightsabers to the game, but this year they didn't. They added uh, Chewbacca, which everyone was excited for, and then also they added his Wookiee Bowcaster, which is really good, and then they brought back the E-11 Stormtrooper Blaster, but the one lightsaber that is in the game is Darth Vader's. If you go and eliminate Darth Vader, the NPC, and you can throw the lightsaber. So, so the Darth Vader is like a boss, which I think that's only for special things that Fortnite does. Is that correct? Yes. And you, when you fight Vader, what is he? Is it scary? What does he look like? Like it... he can basically teleport to you, and he can pull you towards him. He can force choke you. He can throw his lightsaber at you, and then also his stormtroopers start shooting with the E-11 blasters, and it's really fun. Wow. So it's great, right? And how would you rank this compared to other Fortnite updates? I'd say my favorite Fortnite update of all time was just a few weeks ago, I think like last month. It was Avatar The Last Airbender. But this one is one of my favorites too. It's been very cool and a lot of cool new skins. And there, there's even, so probably the best Star Wars update maybe? Probably. And is it, there's one thing you can do where, where for some reason you can ride around on a tiny ad at Is that right? Oh, it's a little emote you can do. And it says little at -AT and you have binoculars. Yeah, it's pretty fun. You can be Dagobah Luke uh, with the tank top. And then you have the back. It's called a back bling, right? Yep. And you've got Yoda on the back. And so any any character can do it. But it's just fun. It's, it's a great way that Fortnite adds new dimensions. And it's also smart marketing because that's how they can earn some money. But... When you throw stars in the mix, you know, sign me up, dude. Uh, ben says, I may have to start playing Fortnite again. I'm always tempted to try it. And then I watch Mason, and I think, yeah, he would destroy me. But that's okay. Darren says, Revenge of the Sith, wipe out the camera. That's I think that's what happened. Mary says that Chaz played Fortnite. Well, Mary, you'll have to send me Chaz's info so that Mason can play him in Fortnite. That'd be fun. Ben says, it reminds me of when they had Mando in Fortnite, and you could take missions from him, right? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That was like chapter three, and there was a bunch of quests you could do, and it could get you different rewards for it. And a reward is like extra weapons, or what does that mean? Um, Like a reward is like a skin or XP, which can get you farther in the battle pass, which is something that costs 950 V-Bucks, and you can get a bunch of skins through the battle pass, and there's a new one each season. See, that's why I have the Fortnite expert right here, because I don't know any of that. Ben says, I like how you pronounce ad ad differently and didn't fight about it. Oh, that's right. Well, that's, you know, that's just good parenting right there. You know, express yourself, be yourself, right? Uh, Mary will send me a in. That's great. All right, now uh, let's jump over to merchandise. Mason hasn't seen this. I don't know if he'll react the way I did, but it's so cool. All right, so we've got, yes, 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 yes. There's a lot of updates, but of a lot of new figures that Hasbro sent over. But now we've got retro figures of uh, episodes two and three but what they've been doing recently is they're putting multiple characters into like a box so for like i think these are 60 bucks so it's 10 bucks a figure and you get all these retro figures which is a three and three quarter inch line but they're made to look like they came out in the late 70s from kenner like this is how the figures would have looked if they came out 
from kind of in the late 70s, early 80s. So let's look at them a little more closely. First, we've got the clone trooper from Revenge of the Sith. I mean, what do you think about that? I think it looks just like an amazing clone trooper. Yeah, and it looks like the classic stormtrooper, and I'm looking at them all over the studio. But it's it's the episode three Revenge of the Sith version. Got the blaster, uh, just a little difference in the armor and the helmet. I mean, that's great right there. But wait, this to me is the home run of home runs, right? Look at this thing. I got to make this a little bit smaller. Excuse me. I'm doing a little bit of ed live editing. Okay, there I am. I'm tiny. I'm tiny. I'm larger. I'm larger. Here we go. There we go. Um, so there's General Grievous, but it's I never dreamed of what Grievous would look like as a retro edition figure. He looks a little, lot larger, a lot wider. When I get to talk to Hasbro, we're gonna, I'm definitely going to ask him about this. But what's your reaction to this guy? I think they executed the arms perfectly. Yeah, why? You can just tell like they didn't put too much space or not enough space. They just did the perfect amount. And it's also not so fancy that it looks like it was made you know, past the late 70s, early 80s. And look at his boots. It looks like Gene Simmons. That's so cool. <laughs> Brian says, my 16-year-old is playing Fortnite right now. I showed him that Mason was talking about. Yeah, and, and Brian, Mason has a YouTube channel that he worked on last summer. And maybe we haven't talked about it. It's going to come out of Mothballs yet, but it was called Prozy Gamer. No, just Prozy. Right, Prozy. That's what I meant. And uh, he has a lot of he has a lot of subscribers. Pretty fun. Uh, Jason says he loves the Clone Trooper. The Clone Trooper is great. Grievous is great. Let's see what else we have. Uh, hit the button, Dan. There we go. Mace Windu from Attack of the Clones. He's got the cloth cape. He's got the purple lightsaber. Like when they first introduced those different kinds of lightsabers, uh, when the Empire Strikes Back, uh, Dagobah Luke came out. I wish they had the telescoping arm for like they do for the original line, but that's a great looking Mace Windu. I think he's a stunning figure. Do you agree? Yeah, I like how they put the hood on there. It's so cool. Then we've got Padme from Attack of the Clones. She looks a lot like her future daughter, Leia. Uh, but again, in that retro version with the little gun, she's got the cloth um, cape in the back. Uh, and then here's this guy. You may have heard of him. It is Revenge of the Sith Anakin Skywalker. Now, he. I, what do you think about that one? The hair looks like it's been wet down a lot. It looks a little flat. There's something that he doesn't look quite the same. And sometimes the retro figures, there's always one or two that look just a little bit different from how you might expect them to be. But nevertheless, I mean, I'm not sad about it. You get to have a classic retro Anakin Skywalker. I'm going to put it next to my retro Darth Vader. Very excited about that. And Larry says, oh my gosh, I also thought of Gene Simmons. Kiss Grievous. Exactly. That's so fun. That is so fun. All right. Speaking of fun, I'm going to try to go back to my regular feed and see if I can get the camera to turn back on. And Oh, I know why it's doing that. It's it's activating this. This. Disconnect. Yes, disconnect. All right. Let's see. Do we get the, there we go. We've got a little treat for you. I don't know if it's going to be a treat. It might. It actually might end up being a trick. Um, you can hand me that box. So Disney and Lucasfilm along with Truff, sent me the Star Wars Dark Side Hot Sauce. And right now, look at this box, it's gorgeous. Right now, Mason and I are going to open this live and we're gonna try it. Now, Mason, uh, how would you describe, how, you can open this if you think you can. Um, it's kind of tricky, but I have faith in you. How would you describe your your interest uh, or your palate, which means like your taste buds, uh, your tolerance for hot sauce. You like hot sauce, right? Yeah, I like hot sauce. I can have like mild and medium. I can maybe have a little bit more than that, but I haven't really tried anything above that. Okay. Well, I told you it's tricky here. That yeah, wasn't fair. That. All right. Uh, do some tap dance or something. So, um, so we have some plans for how we're going to do this once I get this paper off, which I probably should have done in retrospect before. The live stream started, but nah, that's okay. That's okay. I'm good at babbling. Uh, we're going to, Mason, had, what is your idea for how we're going to do this? Because I, I, then I'm going to say, I don't know if I can handle that, but let's see. What do you think? Um, So we have this cup and paper towel we'll probably need. We'll put the hot sauce in the cup, and then we're going to see how long it can take us to, if we really need a drink, we can take a drink of this new blue milk. 
and then we're going to see who can last the longest without taking a drink and how many we can put in our bodies. Wait, how long? What? How long we can what? Uh, Liver says she's into hot sauces, calls to me. You know what? Uh, it's not opening. So maybe, all right, so the show's over. Just kidding. Uh, you know what? While I'm doing this, I'm going to do something I should have thought of before. I'm going to show you a trailer to this week's CWK Prover. As you know, if you are a member of the CWK Alliance, you get access to CWK Pour Over's exclusive podcast and video with myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Clever. We talk about Star Wars, pop culture, go behind the scenes of Coffee with Kenobi. But this week, we finally, after a year of doing this, we finally wrapped up our review of Marvel's Superheroes Secret Wars, the classic miniseries from 1984-1985. Here's a clip. Hello, everybody, and welcome Hello, to everybody. CWK Pour Oh, they're Over. doing an, um, uh, like a barbershop thing. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. 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 Wait, hello. My second, my third. That's a th three One, stooges, two, right? Three. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Let me, I'm just going to start by saying, welcome, Dan Zare. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello to my uh, not so secret buddies. It's great to be back with you and be back with all of our friends on the CWK Alliance. Is not always the case with a comic book cover, but this one has always thrown me because he doesn't look like Doctor Doom. He always looks like Molecule Man to me, so that always kind of throws me off. Oh, oh. we have a con. So it comes down to really Captain America and Doom. I mean, in a large series like this. All right, so that was a preview of, of this week. Uh, the upcoming weekend, we're going to go over X-Men 97 episodes 5 and 6, a spectacular series, certainly not for the faint of heart, but one we're looking forward to and enjoying reviewing. Thank you for your feedback on that. All right, we got this thing open. Uh, ben says that he loves Truff hot sauce. Definitely uh, going to gonna like truffles to like it, though. Hmm, okay. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, Minta says her husband would love to try this. Darren says, big box, how much hot sauce? And Lurch says, I'm in this hot sauce. This calls me. Let's find out. Okay, we got it. We got it here. It looks like you open it here. I'm going to move the microphone. Okay. It's got, it's like, like a magnetic opening. This is a really nice case. Okay. And then it's got like a little fancy, whoops, bump the microphone. Styrofoam. Now, what is this? Felt. Ooh, look at this thing. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Star Wars Truff. It comes in a really nice little package here. Wow, okay, can you put that on the ground? Yep. So this thing, here's what it looks like. It's actually a lot heavier than I expected it would be. Uh, hold it, buddy, what do you think? Oh yeah, it is a little heavier, and I like the design of the bottle with the Darth Vader. Head yeah, on. it's so cool. I'm gonna try to get it real close so you can see what it looks like. Great detail. Uh, there's nothing on, well, there's a little bit on the back. It says, warning, don't eat this, Dan. No, just kidding. It says, uh, what does it say? You read it. It says, <laughs> dark side hot sauce, a mix inspiring by the Sith, fiery ghost peppers blended with black winter truffles. Shake well before each use, refrigerate after opening, no preservatives. Okay, so uh, it says a shake well. We're going to shake it well. This thing is really heavy. Oh, there we go. So it means it says it already looks lethal and that's just the bottle. Okay, so I'm gonna open it. I'm actually nervous. Ooh. Oh, oh just Hopefully like- Hopefully it's not as hot as Moose. All right, so, yeah, right. So now, and as Mason said, we've got the, um, we've got the blue milk. Oh, I can already smell it. Oh! <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna dump this in a little cup here. Just a little bit. Okay. And I will put the lid back on because you know I don't want Darth Vader to go all crazy on us. I've seen Rogue One, I know how that turns out. Putting the lid back on. See my son Peyton is looking in love. It's actually so Parker they love hot sauce. So Vader is gonna watch over here uh, and we've got the um, 
We've got the True Moo Blue Milk ready because you should always use milk, right? When you are taking care of um, something that is really warm. All right, so the first thing I think we should do, I know you have this crazy, I think we should dab our fingers on it and try it. Are you ready for this? Yes. How many people are watching this craziness? 65. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. We'll do it at the same time. Okay, so put your hand there. Let's try it. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's good it's good um it's uh why don't you take a drink no it's okay uh <laughs> uh how would you describe the taste i'm sorry there's fire sticking out of your ears how do you describe the taste mustafarian mustafarian that's hey that was not rehearsed uh it's very spicy it's very strong but i don't like hot sauce that tastes like tobacco tobacco I definitely don't like that, but I don't like something that tastes like Tabasco. I just like something to be hot and have good flavor. This has great flavor. So now it's the, the, the I can't even talk because Darth Vader has destroyed my <laughs> my voice. Uh, it got caught in my throat. Let's get the let's get the chips. This is good. I actually really like it. All right, so we're gonna take some try some chips here. All right, take, take a chip. And who wouldn't want to listen to a couple of of uh, people eating chips on the microphone ready all right so just dip it a little bit you know while we're chewing just uh, out of kindness i'm going to mute the mic for a second so people in here is crunching let's see how this goes but you can still watch go ahead you know what i love it i love it excuse me i think it is really great it goes great with with chips it's great by itself i like hot sauce anyway uh on a scale of one to ten ten being like I can't eat this anymore. My head will pop off of my body. I'd probably put this at about mm, seven or eight. It's really good. It's definitely got a great kick to it, but I love it. Larry says, I wasn't properly prepared for this live show. <laughs> I don't think my studio is, e is either. Ben says, someone needs to do a voiceover of their thoughts while they eat these chips. Challenge accepted, Ben. We should have the full effect need that crunch sound. Vader always did that. <laughs> That was great. So, Mason, are you regretting your life choices, or did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it, and I think we should do a challenge now. What do you mean a challenge? Like, see who can take the most dips without taking a drink. Ah, the most dips. Or just, like, put it in your mouth and just, like, is that what you mean? So you can last long. You know, why don't you show me? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, so, but, but if you use chips, then No it's chips, easy. though. Yeah, no, it's just, so put your finger in there. Really good. Hi. High quality podcasting moment here. Are you ready? I got a lot now. Ready? Here we go. Okay, now I'm. Um, that was. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you put it right on your taste buds, that's that seems a little uh, a little dicey, a little dicey. But it still's got a little like a, a smooth aftertaste. Is that something you say about hot sauce? I don't know, but I can honestly say I love it. So the Star Wars Truff, you can find the link to order this on coffeewithcombi.com. I will reshare it. It is where I announce all of the May the 4th announcements of different kinds of merchandise. I believe the image, if you're not sure which one it is, has the Starbucks Hoth Tumblr. Mason, you're doing really, really well. Uh, do you want to take a break and get a drink? No. No? Okay. This is a tough kid. Well, thank you, Mason, for joining us. This was very entertaining. Nice work. Nice work out of you. Uh, let's go ahead, and uh, we're going to go now and jump. Oh, where did we get the blue milk? I got the blue milk at High V uh, over in the central, over in Peoria, Darren. So if that helps you. All right, everybody say goodbye to Mason. Thanks, Mason. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and jump into our top five now. All right, so <laughs> that was fun. Thanks, everybody, for watching us do that. Here you go, Mace. Take that with you. Can you open the door? Yeah, I'll open the door. Let's open the door. All right. Have fun. Don't put it on your cereal. Yeah. All right, so now we've got the Bad Batch. The Cavalry has arrived. The Cavalry has arrived is the final episode of Star Wars The Bad Batch, obviously. And we're going to give our top five moments from it. I'm just, um, I was ill prepared for the, the studio angles and challenges here, but it's, it's been fun.
Yeah, Bad Batch, the Calvary has arrived. You know, I want to say, first I want to start off by saying I need a drink because that was hot. Just kidding. Um, the Bad Batch is very special to me. Being able to host it with Mason was great. Um, seeing the evolution of these characters that we didn't know anything about, similar to Rebels, in a very different fashion, though. Continuing the story of the clones, which I think is very interesting. Really made for a captivating, fantastic series that I put among the best things that Disney has done with Star Wars. So I love the Bad Batch. Absolutely loved it. Well, let's go into our top five and let's see what you thought. Uh, number five for me, I put Sacrificial Fake Out. Now, what do I mean by that? Early on in the episode, Crosshair decides, no, I am going to go and I'm going to save Omega by myself. I've been inside the base. You two haven't. Um, and basically, they, he's going to execute his own version of, of Plan 99. And they all say, no, you are not doing this. We all knew the risks. And they don't let him do it. And Crosshair was going to. Was he happy about it? I don't know. But, I mean, how could you be happy about something like that? The point is, that was an amazing moment. It was a powerful moment because it showed... Once again, if there was ever any doubt, which I can't imagine there would be, we are sticking together, we are fighting for one another, and we're going to help Omega together. So I thought that was a really cool character moment. Darren's number five, Emery coming around to help the gang escape, which was really nice to see. Really nice to see. Mintas 5 was amazing to see Return of the Zillow Beast and that it lives. Now I just need a live action version. Oh, Minta, that would be so cool. Good call. How did I not think of that? Adam's number 5, you got a hand to cross here. His character arc this season has been impressive. Most impressive. I need that as a soundbite. Number 5 for Jason. Now let's say sacrifice to protect Omega and protect the Empire from having access to Kaminoan technology. Nice. Number 5 for Liberty. Um, the opening stri stripped of striped of color like the Batch's armor note opening coral note very ominous and it's nice kind of a nice bookend as Murray pointed out on Coffee with Kenobi this week and she did a great job as always it's kind of a nice bookend to how the series started back in season one and number five for Brian the slow and prolonged intro with dynamic music left me with a huge sense of dread before any of the action started oh that's a good point Mary's number five, Echo, sending the kids off with Emery. There was no doubt that Omega was staying to finish the mission. That's for sure. Ben's five, the Zilla Beast escapes. It's only natural that Omega uses a creature to wreak havoc and help the kids escape. Yeah, it was perfect. And they all said, it looks like Omega's handiwork. Mary, you are welcome. We always enjoy chatting with you on the show. Let's go to number four. Boy, I still have that taste of the hot sauce in my mouth. It's really good. I can't wait till Peyton tries it. Um... CX Showdown, the, the clone troopers that have been stuck in stasis, we didn't know really what they were. It's hard not to think of Moff Gideon and his lab in The Mandalorian Season 2. But these things emerge to take on the Bad Batch. It's like they're sort of bizarro versions of the Bad Batch. We don't get names. We don't really see faces. But they all have specialties. They're all very good fighters and warriors. And it makes for a really compelling tense moment because we are constantly in the a reminder that we don't know if they're going to live so it was scary but it was really good combat really good fighting sarah's here hello sarah she says omega telling the kids squad is here and telling them this is what she's trained for it was cool very reassuring wasn't it number four for darren they really wanted to end the storyline of the knowledge of cloning as now say destroys the data and herself yeah that was very powerful Mainta is number four. Emery and Echo helping the clones and the children escape. Definitely exciting. Four for Adam. Rampart just couldn't contain himself after finding out about Project Necromancer. Boy, that and that part, boy, that really kind of broke my heart in a way. It was sort of annoying because I didn't want him to do that. But, I mean, that's who he is, right? Brian's for the Zilla Beast ripping up the mountain from the inside to escape. Right? So cool. Four for Jason. Echo and Emery working together. I'm glad she finally turned from the Empires, even if it was late in the game. Very exciting stuff. Number four for Liberty, Emery, how do you know? Echo, because that's what I would have done in reference to Omega's destruction. Interesting. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, they, um, they're they so, they're more alike than I think Emery would have initially let on. Right? Don't you think that's fair? Uh, let me see, where do we go here? 
Sarah's four Omega Fring Nozillo. I lived. I love seeing him walk away into the forest. That was so cool. Probably not for the picnickers who are sitting there waiting. But Ben's number four Emery helps Echo and redeems herself. I finally felt the way she was under the last few episodes as she realizes her mistakes. Or kidnapping kids. Maybe I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, right. You'd think. Mary's four. We do this together. The team stays and works together. Hunter and Wrecker knew immediately that the Zilla Beast diversion was all Omega's doing. Yes. So cool. All right, let's go to number three. Number three, now we get to choose what we want to be. This is at the end, before the end end. You know what I mean, hopefully. And Hunter and Omega are sitting back on Pabu, and they're just re re reflecting and basking in the glory that they're not going to be hunted now by, by Hemlock. They're safe. They feel safe. They get to choose their own life. Do they want to fight? Do they want to retire? What do they want to do? They certainly earned it. It looks like that's really lean, but just knowing that they've got that freedom and that autonomy is really a beautiful thing. Nice to see with a hero. Number three for Darren, the reference to Project Stardust is it will now get the funds versus Hemlock with Project Necromancer. That was a nice Easter egg. Mintas three, Nala say sacrifice just about killed me. She's the last of her kind, and now she managed to destroy the dad on the clones to save them. Means I never thought about the fact that when she did that, she knew she was the last of her kind. That makes it even more powerful, doesn't it? But she didn't want her science in, in the wrong hands. It had been like that for too long. Number three for Adam. Hemlock's conditioning pods gave me total recall vibes. Oh, that's a good connection. Jason's three. Echo and Omega working together to free the clones. They were outstanding together, and I'm glad they got Emery out there, too. Number three for Brian. Rampart versus Hemlock in the Brig. That was pretty cool. That was really cool. Number three for Liberty Crosshair gets dug. This one got me in the feels. Oh my gosh. How did I forget that? That was one of my favorites. That was my number one and I forgot to make it. So I'm going to have that as my asterisk. So thank you, Liberty. Mary's three. Tarkin diverting all the funding to Project Stardust. That was a cool reference. Wasn't it awesome? Number three for Ben. Crosshair makes the shot. He never hesitates. To take the shot despite his struggle. His redemptive arc is really convincing in this episode. I, I think, um, I've said it so many times, Crosshair's arc is a master class in the power of subtle storytelling. Absolutely tremendous. Tremendous. All right, let's go to number two. Number two for me hasn't come up yet. I'm sure it's about to. The future. We get to see a bit of an epilogue of where the batch is. Now we don't get to physically see Wrecker and Crosshair. I'm okay with that. But we do get to see an older uh, grizzled hunter and, an, and a, an adult Omega with a cool jacket with the, the Bad Batch logo on it. She's gonna go into the rebellion, join the rebellion because they need pilots. What a great satisfying ending. Seriously, this thing was just about perfect. It's everything you could have hoped for from, a, from the Bad Batch's series finale. And that future look was just priceless. Absolutely priceless. Mm, let's see. Uh, Sarah's three was Echo saying that Omega, that's Omega's when she frees the Zillow. And Emery asking him how he knows. He tells her because that's what he do. Omega is one of the team. Yes, she is. Number two for Darren. The first time seeing the new Star Destroyer. Nicely not overdone as the two venerators were with it. Yeah, it's the first time the new Imperial Star Destroyer is seen, you know, in the story, in canon, on screen like that, as far as chronologically when it happens. Mintas 2, the true name of Project Necromancer, revealed as Project Stardust. I screamed so loud I freaked out my husband and my fur babies. Well, I hope that they have recovered, Minta. <laughs> 2 for Adam Emery without her goggles at the end, symbolizing that she is seeing things with her own eyes instead of through the lens of the Empire. Wasn't that cool? Two for Liberty. I've been trained for this. This was so much Omega's episode. The Bad Batch was just there as Clone Force Uber. Now that's clever. And let's get a project uh, product placement with Uber, Liberty. Well, you'll be the contact on that. Jason's two, Omega leading the other imprisoned children to escape and safety. She demonstrated just how much she learned from her brothers. And I think we all knew that the Zillabies wasn't going to stay in captivity once she saw it. That's a really good point. Yeah, there's no chance, right? Number three, number two for Mary. Nala says ultimate sacrifice to keep her life's work and the work of her people from falling into the dreaded hands of the Empire. Ben's 2, Project Necromancer revealed they added some great tension. And given it was the last episode, I was convinced we were losing someone. It was tense. 
and the reveal really paid off the tease from the whole season. Yes, it did, and that's one of the reasons why I also think it was so well done. Liberty's next one. Hello, Liberty. Omega wearing a redhead band like Hunter. So great. Oh, I never thought about that. Good catch, Lori. Number two for Brian. Now let's say sacrifice. She stayed true to herself and made right what she did wrong. Well said. Number two for Sarah. Cross her on that bridge, worried about hitting Omega. Hunter tells him trust Omega and wait for her and take the shot, which is very exciting. But now let's go to number one, our, my number one moment from the finale of the Bad Batch, the Calvary has arrived for me. Zilla be silence. Now, I'm not a big kaiju guy. I love um, Godzilla Minus One. There's some things I like, but overall, I've been fairly critical of the genre. I always thought the Zilla Beast was cool. However, in this episode, that Zilla Beast scene is amazing. And if you really want to thrill, put on some good monoral headphones and watch that. Three headphones, the sound mixing by David W. Collins and the team at ILM, Lucasfilm. Uh, just absolutely stunning. The growling, the the rising music from the Kiner Brothers. Just tremendous. Just tremendous. But there's a scene when the Zilla Beast cuts loose. He opens his mouth, this huge roar, and he, and he steps towards the troopers. And all of a sudden, the screen changes to clones, and it's dead silent. It's a real split second. But it's such a stunner. Like, what a way to tell the power and impact of a story. They didn't need loud explosions and this huge eruption of terror and screaming. They kind of already did that. But suddenly, it shifts from him jumping at them with his mouth open, and all of a sudden, the scene changes. It's great directing and cinematography. I loved it. It's a very cool way to tell a story. Spectacular. I think if you watch it, again, you'll see the moment I'm talking about. It's just so cool. All right. Let's see what we got here. Omega's one. Omega. Sorry, Darren's number one. Omega and the gang getting out of Tantus and showing them years later. Which was my number two. So good. Mary's number one. The time jump showing an all grown up Omega and leaving to become a pilot for the rebellion. She will always be there, kid. It's true. And she will also forge her own path, which is they. It was a long path, but when you're a parent, you get it. Mean to the future with an adult Omega and an older hunter. He didn't want her to leave. But he knew that was what she that she was destined to do great things and that he'll be there when she needs him. It's just wonderful parenting. It's good to see between this and Mando examples of good parental role models in Star Wars. Adam's one crosshair literally and figuratively needing to lean on his brother in order to make the shot that frees Omega. Adam, that is an outstanding answer. Number one for liberty. My work will never belong to you or the Empire. It will always be Kevin Owen. Now all this say sacrifice was huge. Was she the final Kevin Owen? I think she was. Minta had pointed that out earlier. And I think I think Minta's right. I mean, Minta's always right. So, of course. Number one for Jason, the ending. They absolutely nailed it. The grown-up version of Omega is perfect. And I love that she left Pabu to become a rebel. And she took Gonky with her. Yes, long live Gonky. And he is going to. Number one for Ben. Grown-up Omega, rebel pilot, and text classes. That's a perfect role for her. And to know that she took her inspiration from tech makes it even better. That last scene hit me hard in the feels. Number one for Brian, the, the take down of Hemlock on the bridge. The communication between Hunter and Omega, then Hunter and Crosshair. So good, right? Number one for Sarah, Omega joins Rebellion, seeing Tex goggles as she flies away, and Hunter telling Batcher, it's all right, girls, she'll be fine. Great ending, we hope we get to see her again. I hope so, too. I hope there are a lot of Omega stories to tell. And if there aren't, you know what? What I got is so satisfying. Thank you, Jennifer and Brad and Dave and everyone at Lucasfilm for making such a great, great series and a very satisfying conclusion. And thank you, friends here at CWK Live. Over 100 of you right now tuning in, which is fabulous. Thank you for joining me each and every week. And I get to learn from you. Like, this is the big thing. Part of me being a teacher, too. I like learning from other people. I like learning from each other. I mean, when you're sharing your thoughts here on the live show, People get to hear what you think and how you analyze stuff. So we get to learn from you. We get to learn from each other. And that's so great. But the fun, the learning doesn't stop because the Bad Batch is finished because we've got other stars to talk about. In fact, next week, there's a new series that came out. Tales of the Empire came out on May the 4th. And we're going to and we're gonna go through every episode individually. Now, I'm going to combine some of them, and I think it'll be pretty clear why. But next week, we're going to watch... Your, um, the first episode of Tales of the Empire, The Path of Fear. And then we're going to share our top five moments. And probably what I'm going to do is we'll put 
the first episode by itself, and then we'll combine two and three. Then we'll talk about the fourth episode by itself, and then combine five and six. And I think narratively and structurally that makes sense. And then after that's done, we jump right into the acolyte, right? So the greatest hits keep coming, and I'm definitely here for it. So be sure to watch The Path of Fear again, Tales from Tales of the Empire, all about the beginning of of um, Morgan Elsbeth, and then come back next week and we'll talk about our top five. Uh, but now I just realized we didn't do Oravesh. We got to do some Oravesh. So let's jump into Oravesh. All right, it's time for some Oravesh lessons. I don't have a quiz for you this week because they were just I knew that the top five would take more time because this is the finale. Do the recap after this. We only got three letters left. And I don't know about you, but I feel like my Orabesh game has stepped up a notch. I feel like I'm starting to be able to read things more consistently, put things together. Even like the 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 Coca-Cola detonator that you can get on Batu. I have one in my classroom and I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, that says Coca-Cola. I mean I know it does, but I can I can see the C. I can see the O. I can start to read it. Uh it says original flavor, right? It just you start to notice these things. And it's really great. As people, and I'm kind of scrolling through these as we're talking, one of the things that's helped me so much is I force myself to try to read it and I force myself to try to write it. And you've probably got stuff all over your house on t-shirts, on collectibles, when you're watching something on Disney+. Plus, You can pause the screen, even with Return of the Jedi, and you can look at what's on the screen and you can start to interpret this stuff. And it's great. Like in The Mandalorian, I was watching the first episode uh, when the when the the fledgling Mithril, the blue creature, is about to be taken by the Mandalorian before he says, "I can bring you in warm or I can bring you in cold," and there's that red uh, text that hovers above him, and it just says "wanted." And I read it right away, and I said it out loud, "Oh my gosh, I can read this!" And I think my students were like, uh, "What's what is Mister Zare's deal?" And that's probably let's be honest, that's probably something they say a lot. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, but it's just really rewarding. So I try to read it, I write it, I practice it, I quiz myself, and I think it helps a lot. So there's R, which was a seven. There's the S, and then it goes into the T, which is almost the same thing, but just point it straight down. You've got your U, which sort of looks like a U with a little tiny hook at the top. The V is what we learned last week, which is um, looks like the letter Y in English, which is great and confusing. So that'll take some getting used to. But the next one, the one for this week, is a W, which is just a perfect rectangle. Finally, a shape I can actually describe without having to be have a degree in, ge in geometry, okay? Um, so W is just a nice, beautiful rectangle. That's W. All we've got after this is X, Y, and Z. And then you have been trained in Orabesh. How cool is that? All right, now let's jump into Ask Dan Z. All right, so next Monday, yes, is going to be when we start looking at Tales of the Empire. But I want you to tell me really quickly, um, how do you celebrate your May the 4th? I, uh, it was a busy day. Being a, being a Star Wars fan is, is fun and it's exciting, especially when you get to celebrate it on May the 4th, right? I'm going to hit the music here. But bear with me, the show's not quite over yet. And um, so as you saw, I was on CBS News 24-7 with Vlad uh, and Anne-Marie, and we talked about Star Wars and May the Fourth and the Impact, and I gave some suggestions about how to watch the films and introduce them to people. That was fun. Always an honor to be on, on CBS or anything where we can, you know, talk about Star Wars together and get more people to be aware of Coffee with Kenobi in this wonderful community. I had the good fortune to present at DePaul University in Chicago at the Pop Culture Conference on Star Wars and Mythology. Imagine that. Some of you were able to join it live on the live stream. It was fun. I got to present with a lot of really cool people, which was a huge, huge honor to me. Huge honor. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Phantom Menace, sadly. I really wanted to. But, you know, there's there's so much going on. There's so many things um, that grab your attention. And, and you hope, you know, for me, it's always family first, as I know it is for you. So when I get a chance, uh, we're going to go. i got to take Mason to the theater to see Phantom Menace. I think it would be great. Uh, hopefully, when you were listening to the Jar Jar slash I'm at best episode, you heard the very end. It was when myself, Nick, Tony, and Chris Bacus, and then Mason 
all went and saw Rogue One in the theaters a couple weeks ago. And the, a lot of them, none of them had seen it in the theaters before or had even seen it. I have, you know, a couple of times, and as, as you have too. And it was fun. It's fun to hear reactions of people. I had a student today who came in and said, Mr. Zara, I saw The Phantom Menace in the theater this weekend. I'd never seen it in the theater. And it was great. I always liked it. But seeing Star Wars on the big screen like that made me realize how cool that movie is. I'm like, yes, seeing Star Wars on the big screen, that is it. That is the way. So awesome stuff. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do we have? Amita says she saw when she came out was blown away. Love that. Darren says, interesting interview with Ahmed Best. Didn't know he was so involved with teaching universities too, I think. Yeah, he is. And he's awesome. He's a really smart guy. Brian ran a 5K in the morning and got to be a Jedi at the Indy Indians game and got on the scoreboard. Brian, I saw that. That was so cool. Well done, my friend. That was so cool. Nice job on that 5K too. Sarah saw this Phantom Menace 25th anniversary. So my son is 25, so it's a nice day. What a beautiful thing. That's so great. I'm glad you had that, Sarah. Liberty says Friday night, saw Phantom Menace. Saturday night, Star Wars night at the minor league ballpark. Sunday, Philly Fan Expo Comic Con. There needs to be a Liberty Timmons Fantasy Camp. You do a lot of cool stuff, Liberty. Keep it up. Ben was hoping to see Phantom Menace too, but he couldn't. He remembers when they released the 3D versions. I was hoping they would do that for all of them. I remember that too. I still have the, gla the Darth Maul glasses. That was fun. Bad to East all day on the 4th. Mary, that is great. Darren watched episodes 4, 5, and 6. I'm, I'm assuming. And Peoria. Uh, being in the theater, wow, so good. On Friday, they before I watched Rogue One, great times. Darren, that is great. I wish I could have joined you all. And Mary saw Phantom Menace on Friday. You got the big R2-D2 popcorn bug. It so great. It was so great spending time with you all. Thanks for to Mason for joining me and to Truff for sending over that Darth Vader hot sauce. Be sure to order yours. It's really tasty. Love it. I think you'll love it too. And I love and appreciate each of you. And thank you so much for joining me here on Coffee with Kenobi. My name is Dan Zara, and I want to thank you again. Remember, this is a podcast you're looking for, the live podcast that is. And it stars light your way, my friends. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. 